Hello, my name is Jill Phillips and I'm delighted to be with you today sharing a bit of our work that we've been doing as a result of the pandemic. Well, that's fair enough, isn't it? You can't say that you weren't warned. Safe. So safe. Safe in my chair, I sit and stare. They only seem to care if I move. Walking around, I might fall to the ground. So I sit in the same old groove. And I watch TV, obediently. But what if the TV blows up? So that was a poem that we used at our virtual Who Shoes event last Friday. I'll tell you more about Who Shoes as we go along. It got people talking. It sparked a really interesting discussion. People started thinking about risk, about personal choice, mental health, and how different experiences affect people differently. These are just some of the comments from our chat box. But it's kind of more of a, a routine exercise to keep people just thinking differently about how they move and the importance of movement. But for me, I think having cared for my grandparents is also understanding how we make it fun and not just like a boring, dull exercise, you know, that people don't really want to do. And I know particularly through my work with older people and caring for my grandparents, that if we ever had um, a talk or a session from someone from say, um, Surrey Fire and Rescue on um, home environment, the men would really like speaking to a fireman and the women quite liked a man in uniform, if I'm honest. <laughs> so, what we've done is we've decided that we will record the firemen doing the exercises. So it's a bit of a partnership approach and a bit of fun, but I think it's just we're trying to think kind of outside the box, I suppose, on how we kind of engage people but in a way that's just a bit more fun. Nicola's example made my heart sing. The idea of tapping into a bit of fun. As we know, everyone is different and the things that appeal to people are different. Happy memories here of my lovely mum, who's sadly no longer with us, using her four-wheel Batmobile, as she liked to call it, to transport her stash of wine and cake to her birthday celebration in her assisted living home. She lived in the apartment furthest from the action, and her regular walks up and down contributed to mum's physical and mental well-being. I learnt a lot from my mum. So what is this who shoes thing and why is it important? I've been a bit cryptic perhaps so far. Who shoes looks at issues from different perspectives. The crowdsource scenarios that we use are all color coded. Formal power. If we wanted to make big changes, then these, the red people, are the ones that we'd need to influence. Then green, the community, businesses, volunteers, perhaps people who make PPE. Frontline staff, perhaps a doctor or hospital porter, and the blue shoes, all of us, the people, the patients, the concerned families and friends. So walking in the shoes of people struggling during the pandemic. And we use Twitter a lot. So as well as crowdsourcing the scenarios and poems from different perspectives, we get people from all perspectives to actually come together to discuss the issues, tap into their passions to co-produce workable solutions. It seems so long ago now that we held real workshops back in the room. Some of the most well-known work that we've done is around maternity care. And this is one of my other links with Brian Dolan, as the PJ paralysis hashtag has obviously been phenomenally successful but so has our MatX hashtag, bringing people together to improve maternity experience. Here's a clip from one of our workshops last year in action. Yeah. <laughs> 
We have crowdsourced Who She's resources for many different topics. So having given this little bit of background, I'll now focus on how the Who She's approach can be applied in the field of MPJ paralysis, encouraging people to stay active. As with everything, it's all about what matters to them, and this is so individual. It's always such a pleasure to get people around the table talking to each other, and most importantly, listening and learning. What, in hospital? Mm-hmm. What, so you can't reach the little table? You might not have, so you yeah. leave a bit to you. Yeah. 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 So that last clip was taken quite a few years ago now, working with a home care provider who wanted to meet and listen to their clients. At the beginning of 2020, so coming right up to date now, I was thrilled to work with Fran Rawlings, a specialist physiotherapist, to plan a Who's Shoes workshop with people in Guildford and Waverley. They wanted to understand more about working with people to help them shape services around frailty and helping people to stay independent. I wasn't actually there. In fact, it was the day that we flew out to New Zealand including meeting up with fantastic healthcare contacts and learning about their engagement work, particularly the wonderful maternity teams reaching out to the Indigenous communities. It was brilliant following Fran's event online. Twitter is so amazing for this. You can see people sitting around the Who's Shoes board game, having their conversations, and in the background, Anna Gaia, one of the fantastic graphic artists that we work with so closely, recording the key points from the conversation in an engaging banner. You'll see more about how that works as we go on. Hopefully the scenarios spark a light bulb moment. Does this person really have so-called challenging behaviour, do you think? Peaceful pacing. We must do more to help our staff understand dementia. One resident keeps pacing in the home all day long and the staff wanted to calm him down with antipsychotics. We found out he was a keen fell walker and used to walking miles every week. He was not agitated, just following his usual routine. We use poems too. What is this challenging behaviour? If my behaviour is challenging, I bet yours would be too. What would you say if someone came and stuck a needle into you? If someone you didn't know came and took you by the hand and tried to make you do things you couldn't understand? If my behaviour is challenging, ask yourself what you can do to make me feel secure and safe the way I used to do. So it was lovely, as I say, to see the tweets coming in from the workshop. Um, Michelle tweeting here, what was going on? And one of the very best things that can happen is if someone spontaneously jumps up and feels relaxed able to share their experience and I was absolutely delighted to see this happening in Surrey. So one of the the participants who was living with dementia told people his story and it was very moving. He in his previous life had been a public speaker and he hadn't felt confident to stand up. He struggled to get his words together but now here he was wanting to, to share that with the people in the room and spontaneous applause and laughter. And I could feel how kind of inclusive that event was and hopefully that made a lot of difference to that person, feeling that they'd managed to, to do that on the day. So it's difficult to kind of put a finger on exactly what happens at Hoshu's event, but 
passion, personal responsibility. We try and encourage people to make pledges, but only if they're from the heart, if they're real. And these pledges were starting to come through on Twitter. So James and Michelle, two senior managers in the organisation, were pledging to use the learning from the day to build it into everything they were doing, really. We will transform integrated health and care. We'll use everything we've discovered today to inform how we improve services for people living in Guildford and Waverley. And again, people in the room being inspired to make pledges. So someone here, and I'm delighted to hear that this is actually happening, some of the early outcomes that um, they're reporting from Guildford and Waverley, working with the hospital to transform the menu to, to make it have a, a carbohydrate count to help people who are living with diabetes know what they're eating rather than just having to guess and hope that it fits in with their, their programme. And then the pandemic came. And ironically, this image of what felt to me like a who's shoes meltdown at the time, I took while I was on, on my holiday in New Zealand. So what were we going to do? And it was fascinating because Anna and Carrie, the graphic artists, were very fired up and they said, do you think we can take our approach online? And interestingly, um, my husband, who's known on Twitter as Mr Who's Shoes, became very excited about it too because he's an IT man and he saw the scope to do some really creative coding, programming, use his proper skills rather than just helping me to bring something special to, to take the approach online. So unusually, I kind of got dragged along by other people a little bit, but not for very long because I also saw the scope to link up and build these virtual conversations online including my, my new links with the people in New Zealand and others through Twitter across the world. So we started to experiment, running a few test sessions. We were all way outside our comfort zone. A new topic, new content, linking up cameras and equipment, writing coding to try and bring the board game online. We were new to Zoom, we were new to MailChimp, Eventbrite, pretty much everything really. But it was clear that the pandemic itself needed to be the topic of the conversations. It was all people had capacity to think about. And we kept spotting really great things that were happening in different parts of the country, different topics, and it felt the right thing to do to kind of capture those and share them and have a positive focus to our events. So basically I was like a squirrel now, collecting best practice scenarios whenever I saw them and wanting to share them widely. And it was exciting because we started to realise that it wasn't just about the things that we were missing from our usual workshops, the cakes and the hugs and all the obvious things, but that we could actually do some extra things that were only possible online, like bringing in photos to illustrate the scenario we were talking about. This lovely little girl sewing her bonding squares and to help tell the story as we went along. So as we went, the aim got more ambitious, really, and a programme started to present itself, sharing best practice. But what about this group of people? What about that group of people? So we started to develop a programme of six sessions. What about the people who'd normally be having NHS services, not coronavirus um, related? What about black and ethnic minority communities who we were learning were sadly disproportionately affected by the pandemic. What about people who were just struggling? Could be any of us really, but perhaps people who are shielding, people who've got learning disabilities, people with mental health problems, people with dementia. And then we wanted to have a maternity special event, which was um, actually yesterday. And how does it feel to become new parents during a pandemic? What can maternity teams do to help? And then our final session, which is next week, building the future. What do we want to hold on to from this pandemic? Things that have happened more quickly, more spontaneously sometimes than we could ever have imagined, like virtual consultations, all sorts of things. So that's the programme that presented itself to us. So did you miss last week's session? Well, here's a taster of it if you did. We wanted to showcase best practice particularly things that we want to see continuing after the crisis, but also bring people a bit of fun. So here's what we did. Let's throw the dice. So I think it's uh, the yellow team's turn to go. They land on a green footprint and they pick up a green card. So this is just one of the scenarios that we used. 
Emily couldn't be on the call herself because she was actually running a couple of her sessions that afternoon, but it was lovely to have her explain in person what she was doing. As soon as we went into lockdown, I was worried my brother Tom, who has Down syndrome, would become socially isolated. I wanted to find a way to help him stay connected with his friends, so I set up some online chat sessions. The groups have been very popular and it has been very lovely to see the young people finding new skills and confidence. I'm now running similar sessions across the country and I intend to continue them after the pandemic. I love Emily's sessions because I go to my friends and it's really fun. Emily's sessions have been amazing. They've really helped to get us through this lockdown experience, a real lifeline. And we realised we had our own stories to tell. I loved the story so much from Carrie Lewis, our graphic illustrator, that we turned it into a Who She's poem. Lockdown lifesaver. I was not known as someone who could leap out of bed. I'm playing grumpy first thing, it has to be said. Doing PE with Joe Wicks at nine in the morning was definitely not for me, I told them yawning. But my mad sisters and their families were having fun on Zoom. I could see them all laughing, jumping around the room. Come on, Carrie. So finally on day five, I joined my first session and finished barely alive. Every joint, every muscle was painful and sore. I thought, this is crazy, I'm not doing this anymore. But because everyone was doing it together, I kept showing up. It was only 30 minutes, I could go back to bed. But I felt alert, energised and motivated instead. We laughed, we moaned, there was a real team spirit. I competed with my nephew, I was keen to win it. We flexed newfound muscles, we had banter and jibes, but all around we had healthy positive vibes. I've gone from being lazy, old before my time, to proud of my waistline, feeling in my prime. Happier mentally and physically stronger, perhaps the lockdown should last a bit longer. And again, we got a great discussion going with everyone sharing their stories. This one is probably best passed over quickly. But one of the key aims of Who's Shoes is to spark what we call lemon light bulb moments. As you will have seen from Fran's workshop, we invite people to make pledges from the heart, things they've been inspired to do as a result of the conversations and connections. We've got better at doing this online now. Here are the, some of the pledges from last week's session. Our two key themes were music and physical activity, and we have pledges related to both. As the creator of Who Shoes, I love connecting with people and helping them connect with others across any imagined boundaries. We're all people. We have so many stories, but one of them concerns two wonderful music therapists, Grace and Claire, and how we all crowdsourced to production of Matex the Musical on the main stage of NHS Expo, the biggest healthcare conference in the UK. But that's another story. Anyway, last week, Grace and Claire joined our virtual session, so it was inevitable that we got them to lead a bit of Who Shoes Magic. Yeah, we did it! <laughs> right, so last little bit then. Last little bit, let's get those instruments going. So we can just have a simple, so do what you want, but we can have a simple beat, so. So, should we, should we try and put it all together? And I know that some of you can't sing because you're in a shared office, so um, maybe you can mouth along or... Well, you, might... you could. You could just sing in the shared office. Yeah, or tap along. <laughs> we have a good... Maybe we could speed it up a bit because I was thinking about the different paces that we all walk at and work at and talk at, so... And sing at. Yeah. And sing at, yeah. That's great. Whoever's got that going, that's fantastic. So give us a four in and then let's have a go. So one, two, three, four. Who shoes are you walking in? 
But the extra magic came from Trevor, who spontaneously led a bit of exercise snacking. B for brilliant. I like the term exercise snacking, and I think I have got an exercise snack which is musical as well. Um, I've been doing Gareth Malone's virtual choir, and one of his warm ups, I think everybody will know uh, My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, My Bonnie Lies Over the Sea. Uh, but one of the warm ups is every time you, you sing that, but every time you say a word that starts with B, you either stand up or sit down. Can you lead us? Serious exercise snacking. We'll just do it once. Okay. <laughs> My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. Bring back my body to me. To me. Bring, back, bring, back, bring back my body to me. To me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my body to me. <laughs> Bonkers. It was brilliant with a bow. <laughs> and very good fun. I can't get over the talent of Anna and Carrie and the way they capture the conversations. They do these live during the sessions and we've found it's just the same experience online. Something new that we've been experimenting with is also doing a reflective piece, a learning synthesis from each event. You can look on New Possibilities website to view these in detail. Here's the graphic record of last Friday's event. Well, I did promise Brian Dolan I'd try and make this presentation topical. So thank you for listening. I'd love to connect, but realistically, you can best find me on Twitter, at Who's Shoes. I'm excited about the possibilities of virtual Who's Shoes to link with people who want to make a difference and continue the conversations across the world.